heritage is very important. And in this two-part special, I will be talking to Maha Saka from the Palestinian Heritage Center. I sat down with Maha and I asked her, what is the Palestinian Heritage Center? Yes, I am the director of the Palestinian Heritage in Bethlehem. Uh, it's established in 1991 uh, to preserve and to promote and uh, to show the roots of the Palestinians since 5,000 years through our culture and heritage. The center divided to many sections, the sitting room, the Bedouin tent, and uh, the postcard and the posters. Every postcard like identity for every village and town in Palestine. We show in this postcard the historical and archaeological and religious places, and we join between the dress and the historical places, like the dress is like identity. And we have the library. We have more than a more than thousand books in the center. Uh, just about the culture and heritage and we have the section of the uh, women working in embroidery we have more than 40 women they work embroidery uh, to imitate the old pieces to make cushions but now we we uh, make the new fashion new uh, fashion clothes and we add the old uh, design uh, and we add the um, the real motif and the real color to keep the identity of our embroidery. We join many, many exhibitions all over the world between like the Arab lands uh, in Jarash Festival, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Bahrain, Germany, uh, Strasbourg, uh, Portugal, and Madrid, and um, Washington, Detroit, and until now is not in Canada. I hope that uh, they invite me there to make this exhibition. We make fashion shows uh, for the Palestinian dresses uh, to speak about every village through the dress. Yeah, and, uh, from uh, because you know that every dress we have more. Uh, we have a dress for every village and town in Palestine. You can tell from where this lady from her dress because she wrote the story about. Uh, uh, what surrounded her and what think up what she thinks about it on her dress I can give you an example like in Jaffa we are very famous in orange uh, groves orange trees the woman she uh, and we surrounded the orange uh, groves with the cypress tree and the woman in Jaffa dress we can see exactly the the orange blooms and they surrounded the her the chest of the dress and the back of the dress with this cypress tree and uh, orange grooves and the uh, flower of the orange on the on the dress. That's why the dress is like identity. You can know from where this woman from her dress because yeah, completely it's different b between each other from Ramallah, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and uh, Galilee or uh, Bir Sabah. And yeah, you can uh, every every region or every city or village we have a special dress. We make uh, courses for the new generation to teach them many uh, skills like embroidery or uh, like uh, straw and we make lectures for the school. Yesterday we have a very big uh, lectures for the students of the University of Bethlehem and uh, they, uh, when they come they are very happy to know more about their culture, to be proud of their culture and the schools also come to the center to make link between uh, between what they read in their books and what we have in the museum. We have the whole house section for, as a museum for the household items and what we use in the field. And there you can see here, I don't know many things, you can ask me more. Yeah, it's like it's like stepping back in, in history, seeing all the, the pictures and all the articles that you would use. Now, is traditional heritage important today for people, especially the youth of Palestine? I think uh, after the Intifada, we think that we have another weapon to show that we, we have roots in this land. We return back to our culture to, just to be to have something that we have roots here. Uh, I can give you a very big example. Many women, they return back for to work embroidery for two reasons, to keep the identity and to have work, because this is the only work they can do it in their house between their children. But uh, how we return back to our uh, cultural dress, uh, now in the wedding, uh, the center rent a uh, 
the dress for the um, for many regions and the, the girl she come and she rent the dress for her grandmother and this in this way we can make link between the past and the future uh, between the daughter and the grandmother in this way we keep the identity alive and now we make then uh, the new fashion dresses and we add some uh, uh, some design all design on the new fashion like how I wear now the uh, the cap with the embroidery this is very old the design and I use it now as a modern uh, design now what sort of traditional clothes do men wear yes uh, that's why when you see my pictures here the Patrician traditional dresses you can see most of them is the girls but because the men they use just one dress in all Palestine the Kumbaz and the Abaye and the Kofiye that's why I put just a man in my, uh, you know, that I make the map of the Palestinian costumes. And this is very important and very nice. I show that all the historical places in many regions and many, like I show the Bethlehem Nativity Church, I show Sebastia in Nablus, and I put like uh, Hisham Palace in Jericho and the dress of, Hish of uh, Jericho. I show in between the historical place and the dress in, in the map I establish it or I publish it in the Palestinian Heritage Center in Bethlehem. Yes. Now men, they wear the traditional scarf. What are they called? Kufiyya. It's like Arafat Kufiyya. Yeah. Now do they have specific meanings behind the colors that they wear? The man, yes. Uh, of course, this is uh, this is my uh, like you see, saw the pictures here is for the generation through generation. But the kufiye, uh, uh, like Arafat kufiye, is for the uh, who make the revolutions in 1936. They were this uh, like the uh, who who is active in Palestine. Now you've said women like to wear the embroidery dresses. Is anything else important to women like jewelry? Yes, the jewelry, like and the the head dresser, also. Like every village has a special dress. Also, every village has special coin, jewelry, uh, coins, and special hat. Like Bethlehem hat is a uh, it's shatwe, it's, it's named shatwe, and it's it's a part of the dowry. Yeah, and the groom give it for the bride, and she put the gold and the the, the silver coins on the on her head. It's and to keep it, and she keep it on her uh, head, like we now we put it in the bank, but she put it on her uh, head. So this is very expensive. If you were to lose one, it'd be disastrous. Yes, it's very expensive. You know, my I have the the hat of my grand grandmother, and uh, it's full of gold and silver. And I ask my mother why it's uh, we lose some gold from uh, this. She she told me that your grandmother she took piece after piece when she needs money. She give it for the doctor. She go to the market take and it's it's her money. She put her money on her head and on her hand and on her neck that's why this is the money she has it from her husband was it safe to walk around with that much money around with you uh, before yes before yes it's very she's very safe but now it's not safe at all in everywhere not just here yeah, yeah. yes so what sort of foods are traditional foods here in the Palestinian territories I think the most important food we have the falafel, hummus and falafel, and the mjaddara and the uh, maklube and mansaf. This you, you can just explain what they are? Ah, yeah, this is the falafel. It's from hummus. It's uh, make it and we put it in a sandwich. Yeah, it's very famous. It's for the uh, poor people. Yeah, it's very cheap and but it's very delicious. And the uh, mansaf is rice and meat and uh, yogurt and it's very famous and very delicious and maklube is uh, rice and uh, um, the black zucchini the black zucchini the big one yes it's uh, and we uh, mix the meat with the rice it's very delicious yes yeah. are vine leaves and rice very important yes, as culture yes yes it's warak dawali yes uh, it's for the grapes we leaves we round the we put the meat and the rice in it and it's very delicious food also yeah. So do some people still live in tents here in the Palestinian territories? Yes, we live in tents before. It's in the desert. But now you know that we, Palestine is a desert and villages and cities. But in the cities you will never see the, the tent. The tent just for the refugees and for the people in the desert. 
So if you go into the desert now, you can actually see that them sitting in the tents. Yes, I'm belie- uh, unbelievable. I can't believe that the people still can live in a tent without refrigerators and all these machines. But uh, they are happy. They are. This is their life. They are. Happy. Do they have running water and electricity there? I don't think so. No, no. They still go. But I think uh, some uh, Muslim municipalities they give him a pipe for water or something like this. And that's their choice. They love to live in there. That's the lifestyle they want to live rather than live in a proper house. Yes, they enjoy it very much because, you know, uh, in the desert now, they ask them to build them for them a houses. In another village, they, they refuse. They said this is how we live and we have sheep and we have camels and we like to live uh, like our grand-grandfather. But as I tell you, this is just in the desert. But, you know, here in Bethlehem, like here, we have the refugee camps. We have some tents here for the poor people. Now you talked about sheep. Can you actually go into Bethlehem today and see the shepherd just walking his sheep down the road? Is that something that you can see today as a traditional image and idea of what you maybe saw in Jesus' time? Uh, yes. I still see some sheep walking the way and the shepherd, the, the sheep, yes. Because he went for a far place to play for a, where, where is the water and the food and they walk in the street here. You can see it, yes. Does the shepherd stay with the sheep all day? Yes, but he can leave it. And when he walks, just the sheep follow him, just like this, like the school, yeah, the, the students in the school. Yeah, and it's very nice, and uh, I enjoy to, to look at them. Yeah. I know my father looks after sheep, and uh, you have to chase them, to, even just to get them through a gate. So the, the sheep here will actually follow the shepherd and just go where he wants them to go. Yes, they can know where they go. Yeah. Yes, the sheep, yes, it's very nice. <laughs> Now, are camels still popular here? No, the camels, no, at all. Yeah, and you can see just the camel in Jericho or in Jerusalem for the tourists. Yeah, and here in Bethlehem, we don't have the camel. The camel in the desert, mm. yes. What is Palestinian music like? Oh, we have a very nice instruments uh, like um, Rababe and uh, Yargul. It is, Rababe is a piece of, of the leather of the sheep. It's make, yeah, you know, this shep- the shepherd, they make music for their, uh, his uh, sheep. Like uh, guitar. Guitar, like the, yes, it looks like the guitar, but not from the wood, from the skin of the sheep, yeah, it's from the leather. And the uh, Yargul is from the, like the pipe here, like, yeah. It's from the wood and like the, the, the flute, yes, 100%, with these holes, and it's very nice music. And my son, he's a very mu- musician. He's a, he is a engineer, um, architectural engineer, but he's, his hobby to me, play music. He can play drums, uh, piano, and uh, now he, they mix between the foreigner music and the Arabic music. It's very nice. Is Arabic music still very, very popular here, or has the Western influence been creeping in? I think the Western is uh, now, they use it, the new generation more. But we return back sometimes for the old music, it's very nice. Maha Saka is the director of the Palestinian Heritage Center in Bethlehem. And in the second part interview, I asked her, what is a Palestinian wedding like? You know that wedding in Palestine is uh, very nice. We spend too much money, but we must not spend money because we are not uh, rich here. But they still uh, make a very big wedding here and uh, they serve food and cake. But uh, now they return back to wear the traditional dress the day before the wedding for the henna uh, to make link between the past and the future between the grandmother and the, her daughter. It's very nice to return back to our culture and heritage, yes. Now, would the bride wear a traditional white dress for her wedding day? Yes, yes. The, the traditional dress, they wear it for the day before the wedding, like our traditional dress here. But the, the, on Sunday, they, she wears the, the white dress, yes. Like me, I wear the, bri- the white dress here, yes. So the brides actually traditionally get married on a Sunday, that's the day for weddings? Yes, Sunday, yes. The, they wear, she wear the uh, white dress. So how long does a, a traditional, typical wedding last? Is it over a week or is it just the one day? Or uh, 
I think, uh, no, sh just for one day before the wedding. But now also they rent uh, for ho the whole family. Yeah, and you can see here in the center many pictures. W the family now, especially in Beit Sahur, when they make the Arabic wedding, our traditional wedding, most of the people there, the women, they wear the traditional dress. It's very beautiful. I attend many weddings in uh, Beit Sahur. Do you have a best man at the wedding? Yes, yes, of course, yes, the best man. Yeah, and, uh, we don't have it like in Europe, uh, 10 or 8. We have just one best man. Yeah. He, he stands beside the groom. Now, the most important thing for all fathers is who pays for the wedding? Is it the bride's father or the, the groom's father? Who pays? Oh, ya haram. <laughs> the father of the groom, of course. They sp he spent all the money for everything, for the house, for the food, for the wedding. Yeah, and if, you, if you have son, yeah, and, uh, that's why sometimes many... Some of the uh, boys, they married from the foreigners. Uh, in this way, they, they don't spend the money like they spend here, too much money. When I want to, yeah, any father want to make a wedding for his son, he spent too much money. That's why. So the wedding is very, very important for the family when they come together and get married. Yes, very important, very nice. Yeah, and, uh, the, and this is the, the most special, important day for the for the family. So what is a, a Palestinian funeral like? The funeral uh, is very simple. Now they put, yeah, they make it in, uh, after they die, they, they put it in refrigerator for one day to, to all the family come and they bring it to the house. And now when they pray on the church on him, uh, they put it in a, in a room or in a hall in the church. And now it's very more easy because before they return back to the houses and the, uh, most of our houses is not small. Uh, that's why uh, now they make it uh, for everybody to go for a hall special for the funeral, after the funeral. Uh, are most people buried the same day when they die? Yes, yes, especially the Muslims, yeah, and they, they, after hours they buried it. Also now the Christian in one day they buried their... Uh, if, but if there is uh, some, his, their sons or somebody outside the country, they can put it on the refrigerators. But most of them they buried it in the same day. Do they call, carry the body down the street for people to see and to look at? Yes, they carry it and they open it also. That is a very important culture for them to see the person. Yes, I think they didn't cover it, but uh, if he come from outside the funeral, they cover it because it's not nice to see the face after many days. But here they open it and they carry it for, with the family and everybody saw it. Will people go back to the home to mourn to the loss afterwards? Uh, no, not to the house, to the uh, hall, three days, we sit, all the family sit uh, three days in this hall, and all the people come and take give his uh, sympathy for them. Now, Arab men like to smoke a special water pipe. What's it called and what does it look like? Oh, this is a new fashion for us, yes. Uh,
Heritage is very important. And in this two-part special, I will be talking to Maha Saka from the Palestinian Heritage Center. I sat down with Maha and I asked her, what is the Palestinian Heritage Center? Yes, I am the director of the Palestinian Heritage in Bethlehem. Uh, it's established in 1991 uh, to preserve and to promote the, and the, to show the roots of the Palestinians since 5,000 years through our culture and heritage. The center divided to many sections, the sitting room, the Bedouin tent, and the, the postcard and the posters. Every postcard, like identity for every village and town in Palestine, we show in this postcard the historical and archaeological and religious places, and we join between the dress and the historical places, like the dress is like identity. And we have the library, we have more than, more than 1,000 books in the center, uh, just about the culture and heritage and we have the section of the a woman working in embroidery we have more than 40 women they work embroidery uh, to imitate the old pieces to make cushions but now we we uh, make the new fashion new uh, fashion cloth and we add the old uh, design uh, and we add the um, the real motif and the real color to keep the identity of our embroidery. We join many, many exhibitions all over the world between like the Arab lands uh, in Jarash Festival, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Al Bahrain, Germany, uh, Strasbourg, uh, Portugal, and Madrid, and um, Washington, Detroit, and until now is not in Canada. I hope that I, they invite me there to make this exhibition. We make fashion shows uh, for the Palestinian dresses uh, to speak about every village through the dress. Yeah, and, uh, from uh, because you know that every dress we have more. Uh, we have a dress for every village and town in Palestine. You can tell from where this lady from her dress because she wrote the story about. Uh, uh, what surrounded her and what think up what she thinks about it on her dress I can give you an example like in Jaffa we are very famous in orange uh, groups orange trees the woman she uh, and we surrounded the orange uh, groups with the cypress tree and the woman in Jaffa dress we can see exactly the the orange blooms and they surrounded the, her, the chest of the dress at the back of the dress with this cypress tree and uh, orange grooves and the uh, flower of the orange on the on the dress. That's why the dress is like identity. You can know from where this woman from her dress because yeah, completely it's different b between each other from Ramallah, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and uh, Galilee or uh, Bir Saba. And yeah, you can uh, every every region or every city or village we have a special dress. We make uh, courses for the new generation to teach them many uh, skills like embroidery or uh, like uh, straw and we make lectures for the school. Yesterday we have a very big uh, lectures for the students of the University of Bethlehem and uh, they, uh, when they come they are very happy to know more about their culture, to be proud of their culture and the schools also come to the center to make link between, uh, between what they read in their books and what we have in the museum. We have the whole house section for, as a museum for the household items and what we use in the field. And there you can see here, I don't know many things, you can ask me more. Yeah, it's like it's like stepping back in, in history, seeing all the, the pictures and all the articles that you would use. Now, is traditional heritage important today for people, especially the youth of Palestine? I think uh, after the Intifada, we think that we have another weapon to show that we, we have roots in this land. We return back to our culture to, just to, be, to have something that we have roots here. Uh, I can give you a very big example. Many women, they return back for, to work embroidery for two reasons, to keep the identity and to have work, because this is the only work they can do it in their house between their children. But uh, how we return back to our uh, cultural dress, uh, now in the wedding, uh, the center rent a, 
the dress for the um, for many regions yeah, and the, the girl she come and she rent the dress for her grandmother and this in this way we can make link between the past and the future uh, between the daughter and the grandmother in this way we keep the identity alive and now we make the, uh, the new fashion dresses and we add some uh, some design all design on the new fashion like how I wear now the uh, the cap with the embroidery this is very old design and I use it now as a modern uh, design now what sort of traditional clothes do men wear Yes, uh, that's why when you see my pictures here, the Patrician traditional dresses, you can see most of them is the girls. But because the men, they use just one dress in all Palestine, the Kumbaz and the Abaye and the Kofiye. That's why I put just a man in my, uh, you know, that I make the map of the Palestinian costumes. And this is very important and very nice. I show that all the historical places in many regions and many, like I show the Bethlehem Nativity Church, I show Sebastia in Nablus, and I put like uh, Hisham Palace in Jericho and the dress of, Hish of uh, Jericho. I join between the historical place and the dress in, in the map I establish it or I publish it in the Palestinian Heritage Center in Bethlehem. Yes. Now men, they wear the traditional scarf. What are they called? Kufiya. It's like Arafat Kufiya. Yeah. Now do they have specific meanings behind the colors that they wear? The man, yes. Uh, of course, this is uh, this is my uh, like you see, saw the pictures here is for the generation through generation. But the kufiye, uh, uh, like Arafat kufiye, is for the uh, who make the revolutions in 1936. They were this uh, like the uh, who who is active in Palestine. Now you've said women like to wear the embroidery dresses. Is anything else important to women like jewelry? Yes, the jewelry, like and the the head dresser, also. Like every village has a special dress. Also, every village has special coi jewelry uh, coins and special hat. Like Bethlehem hat is a uh, is shatwe. It's named shatwe, and it's a, it's a part of the dowry. Yeah, and the groom give it for the bride, and she put the gold and the the, the silver coins on the on her head. It's and to keep it, and she keep it on her uh, head, like we now we put it in the bank, but she put it on her uh, head. So this is very expensive. If you were to lose one, it'd be disastrous. Yes, it's very expensive. You know, my I have the the hat of my grand grandmother, and uh, it's full of gold and silver. And I ask my mother why it's uh, we lose some gold from uh, this. She she told me that your grandmother she took piece after piece when she needs money. She gave it for the doctor. She go to the market take and it's it's her money. She put her money on her head and. On on her hand and on her neck. That's why this is the money she has it from her husband. Was it safe to walk around with that much money around with you? Uh, before, yes. Before, yes. It's very. She's very safe, but now it's not safe at all. In everywhere, not just here. Sure. Yeah. Yes. So, what sort of foods are traditional foods here in the Palestinian territories? I think the most important food we have the falafel, hummus and falafel, and the mjaddara and the maklube and mansaf. This if you can just explain what they are. Ah, uh, yeah, this is the falafel. It's from hummus. It's uh, make it and we put it in a sandwich. Yeah, it's very famous. It's for the uh, poor people. Yeah, it's very cheap and but it's very delicious. And the uh, mansaf is rice and meat and uh, yogurt and it's very famous and very delicious and maklube is uh, rice and um, the black zucchini the black zucchini the big one yes it's uh, and we uh, mix the meat with the rice it's very delicious yes yeah. are vine leaves and rice very important yes, as culture yes yes it's warak dawali yes uh, it's for the grapes we leaves we round the we put the meat and the rice in it and it's very delicious food also yeah. so do some people still live in tents here in the Palestinian territories yes we live in tents before it's in the desert but now you know that we, Palestine is a desert and villages and cities but in the cities you you will never see the, the tent, the tent just for the refugees and for the people in the desert.
So if you go into the desert now, you can actually see that them sitting in the tents. Yes, I'm belie- uh, unbelievable. I can't believe that the people still can live in a tent without refrigerators and all these machines. But they, they are happy. They are. This is their life. They are. Happy. Do they have running water and electricity there? I don't think so. No, mm-hmm. no. They still go. But I think uh, some uh, Muslim municipalities they give him a pipe for water or something like this. And that's their choice. They love to live in there. That's the lifestyle they want to live rather than live in a proper house. Yes, they enjoy it very much because, you know, uh, in the desert now, they ask them to build them for them uh, houses. In another village, they, they refuse. They said this is how we live and we have sheep and we have camels and we like to live uh, like our grand-grandfather. Because, uh, as I tell you, this is just in the desert. But, you know, here in Bethlehem, like here, we have the refugee camps. We have some tents here for the poor people. Now, you talked about sheep. Can you actually go into Bethlehem today and see the shepherd just walking his sheep down the road? Is that something that you can see today as a traditional image and idea of what you maybe saw in Jesus' time? Uh, yes. I still see some sheep walking the way and the shepherd the, the sheep, yes. Because he went for a far place to play for a, where, where is the water and the food, and they walk in the street here. You can see it, yes. Does the shepherd stay with the sheep all day? Yes, but he can leave it. And when he walks, just the sheep follow him, just like this, like the school, yeah, the, the students in the school. Yeah, and it's very nice, and uh, I enjoy to, to look at them. Yeah. I know my father looks after sheep and... Uh, you have to chase them, to even just to get them through a gate. So the, the sheep here will actually follow the shepherd and just go where he wants them to go. Yes, see, they can know where they go. Yes, the sheep, yes. It's very nice. <laughs> now, are camels still popular here? No, the camels, no, at all. Yeah, and you can see just the camel in Jericho or in Jerusalem for the tourists. Yeah, and here in Bethlehem, we don't have the camel. The camel in the desert, yes. What is Palestinian music like? Oh, we have a very nice instruments uh, like um, rababi and uh, yargul. It is rababi. It's a piece of of the leather of the sheep. It's make yani, you know this shepherd, the shepherd. They make music for their uh, his uh, sheep. Like uh, guitar. guitar, like the yes, it looks like the guitar, but not from the wood, from the skin of the sheep. Yeah, it's from the leather. And the uh, yargul is from the like the pipe here, like yeah, it's from the wood and like the, the, like the flute, yes, hundred percent with these holes and it's very nice music. And my son, he's a very mu- musician. He's a he is a engineer, um, architectural engineer. But his his hobby to mu- play music. He can play drums, uh, piano, and the. Uh, now he, they mix between the foreigner music and the Arabic music. It's very nice. Is Arabic music still very, very popular here, or is the Western influence been creeping in? I think the Western is uh, now, they use it, the new generation more. But we return back sometimes for the old music. It's very nice. Maha Saka is the director of the Palestinian Heritage Center in Bethlehem. And in this second part interview, I asked her, what is a Palestinian wedding like? You know that wedding in Palestine is uh, very nice. We spend too much money, but we must not spend mon- money because we are not uh, rich here. But they still uh, make a very big wedding here, and uh, they serve food and cake. But uh, now they return back to wear the traditional dress the day before the wedding for the henna, uh, to make link between the past and the future, between the grandmother and the, her daughter. It's very nice to return back to our culture and heritage, yes. Now, would the bride wear a traditional white dress for her wedding day? Yes, yes. The, the traditional dress, they wear it for the day before the wedding, like our traditional dress here. But the, the, on Sunday, they, she wears the the white dress, yes. Like me, I wear the, bri- the white dress here, yes. So the brides actually traditionally get married on a Sunday? That's the day for weddings? Yes, Sunday, yes, the... They were, she wore the uh, white dress. So how long does a, a traditional, typical wedding last? Is it over a week or is it just the one day? Or uh, 
I think, uh, no, she, uh, just for one day before the wedding. But now also they rent uh, for ho the whole family. Yeah, and you can see here in the center many pictures. W the family now, especially in Beit Sahur, when they make the Arabic wedding, our traditional wedding, most of the people there, the women, they wear the traditional dress. It's very beautiful. I attend many weddings in uh, Beit Sahur. Do you have a best man at the wedding? Yes, yes, of course, yes, the best man, yeah, and, uh, we don't have it like in Europe, uh, 10 or 8, we have just one best man, yeah. he, he stands beside the groom. Now the most important thing for all fathers is who pays for the wedding, is it the bride's father or the, the groom's father? Who pays, oh, ya haram, <laughs> the father of the groom, of course, they sp he spent all the money for everything, for the house, for the food, for the wedding, yeah, and if you... If you have son, yeah, and, uh, that's why sometimes many, some of the uh, boys, they married from the foreigner. Uh, in this way, they, they don't spend money like they spend here, too much money. When I want to, yeah, any father want to make a wedding for his son, he spent too much money. That's why. So the wedding is very, very important for the family when they come together and get married. Yes, very important, very nice. Yeah, and, uh, they, and this is the, the most special, important day for the for the family. So what is a, a Palestinian funeral like? The funeral uh, is very simple. Now they put, yeah, and they make it in, uh, after they die, they, they put it in refrigerator for one day to, to all the family come and they bring it to the house and now when they pray on the church on him, uh, they put it in a, in a room or in a hall in the church. And now it's very more easy because before they return back to the houses and the, uh, most of our houses are small. That's why uh, now they make it uh, for everybody to go for a hall special for the funeral, after the funeral. Uh, are most people buried the same day when they die? Yes, yes, especially the Muslims, yeah, and they, they, after hours mm. they buried it. Also now the Christian in one day they buried their... Uh, if, but if there is uh, some, his, their sons or some but the outside the country, they can put it under refrigerators because most of them, they buried it in the same day. Mm -hmm. Do they carry the body down the street for people to see and to look at? Yes, they carry it and they open it also. That, is that a very important culture for them to see the person? Yes, I think they didn't cover it, but uh, if he come from outside the funeral, they cover it because it's not nice to see the face after many days, but here they open it and they carry it for, with the family and everybody saw the Will people go back to the home to mourn to the loss afterwards? Uh, no, not to the house, to the uh, hall, three days. We sit, all the family sit uh, three days in this hall and all the people come and take give his uh, sympathy for them. Now, Arab men like to smoke a special water pipe. What's it called and what does it look like? Oh, this is a new fashion for us, yes, and I don't like it, because it's more dangerous than the cigarettes. But here, I now you can see the women and the men, they use it. Yeah, in the house, in the cafe, and they open many cafe for this. It's a long uh, glass with water, and they put the cigarettes on the top of it, and uh, there is a long uh, tube. They can uh, smoke through the water to make it more. They thought that they make it more easy for their lungs, but this one, it's more than one bucket. It's more than 20 cigarettes. When you smoke on this, it's very dangerous. Well, so if you smoke one pack of tobacco on there, it's like 20 cigarettes? Yes, it's around 20 cigarettes. It's very dangerous. Wow. Well, yes. Do people smoke them all the time? Uh, no, it's in the weekend. And yeah, I, I know many people, they smoke this, but not every day at all, yeah, and they don't, we don't have time, because you, you must relax and you have time, it's in, week, in the weekend. Now coffee is very important here, you have Arabic coffee? Yes, here, I can serve for you Arabic coffee now, it's very important 
for يعني you can't enter any house without serving coffee if you don't uh, drink coffee it means that you don't like this family and there is a very important thing in this coffee if you drink the first one uh, it means that you are happy if you drink the second one that you enjoy your sitting but you must not drink the third one if you drink the third one it means that you will fight with this family you will be member of this family and you know that you shake the cup it means is that enough okay. that's why many people they didn't drink the third one do they have special cups and, and for pouring the coffee in yes it's without the hands it's around the uh, the size is very very small because we have a, a coffee without sugar and the coffee the, the coffee is the the cup is very small because you can't drink a coffee without sugar too much but with sugar you can drink a little bit more so it is very very strong coffee that they're drinking it's well it's very nice and it's good for health i think if you of course you, you, it give you a uh, energy and it tastes very nice and very good now you have lots of furniture here is uh, palestinian furniture different than other parts of the world what's the traditions that they have in their furniture Yes, we have a very rich furniture. When you see my furniture here, I use it for the wedding of my grandmother in 1924. And this furniture has come from Syria, a uh, big Syria. And you know that Palestine before Sykes Pico divided the uh, Palestine, Syria, and Lebanon and Jordan. Uh, my grandmother, she went to Syria, to Dam Damascus, to buy her things from there because it's one country before. Uh, that's why our furniture is very rich. I have a very nice house uh, with a very nice uh, furniture. Yeah, my house built in 1910, and you can see the ceiling, how it's round like this. Now you've got um, carpets on the floor that are very, very red, and, and we're sitting on, like, it's like a, a couch, but it's sort of put together. What Can you explain what it's like? Yes, it's, uh, it's our sitting room before. It's like two mattress. Now you sit in two mattress, but we cover it in a very nice cover from uh, Saya or Damascus uh, uh, material. And the most important, the uh, cushions. The cushions also like the jewelry and like the dress, we have cushions for every village and town in Palestine. <coughs> but the most important color is the red. You know, the Canaanite, it means the red. Now we have here um, some wooden chairs with, uh, is it mother of pearl that you've got inside? decorated on side of it? Yes, it's a very, very nice uh, geometric uh, design with this mother of pearl and you can see the table also, the same and the, uh, the table and the small tables also and all the chairs with this uh, good wood and with this, uh, I hope that it's in the TV then you can see the beauty of our culture and uh, furniture. Yeah, yeah. Now you've won many awards, uh, what sort of awards have you won and how did you win them? I will, I'm happy to say that I win many awards for, uh, all over the world, but the most important one is one from Chicago University because I make exhibition there in Chicago University for five months. I put our uh, Palestinian dresses there in the museum. Uh, and uh, we uh, publish a book. The name of the book is Embroidering Identity, Essentially of Palestinian Clothing. And you can find this book in Amazon uh, library. And uh, now the most important award I took uh, before just a month uh, from the International Tourism Day. Uh, the, the name of this competition is the Woman and Culture between 60 countries in the world like uh, United States, Canada, and Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, uh, Jordan, uh, Venezuela, Cuba. Uh, but Palestine, it's the winner the first in the world and they invite me to Madrid to Spain to give me the award there and I'm happy that uh, in this way we can show the the beauty of our culture and the picture I win I win this award for the pristine and dresses I you know that I have this uh, posters with more than 14 dresses for 14 uh, cities and it's very beautiful you can open my website just on Mahasaka M H A S A C A S A C A in Google, and you can see the all my uh, website and the beauty of our culture in my website there. 
Now, do you have women making the dresses locally for you? Oh, this is a very important uh, question. I have here the section, um, there is uh, more than 40 women they are working in the center because this is the only work they can do it in their house between their children. The center gives them the, the material, the thread, the design, and they, and they do it in their house and bring it to the center. I give them the money and I, I sell them by the exhibition. I do it all over the world or in the center. Yeah, and the most important to sell this uh, protect, uh, product, especially the embroidery, it's very nice, very beautiful. You can also see it in my website. So have you had many people visit here who are famous? Oh, I think so. You can see many pictures. Uh, yeah, and, uh, I think I will see the famous people, but the most famous for me is the students. The university students, they come here and make lectures for the students to let them know more about their culture and heritage and to be proud of it. But here, and also the tourists, many times they come here to visit the center. It's more than 350 meters. It's like a big museum here. But uh, many famous people, if you like, you can see many like Arafat or uh, Halam Ashrawi or uh, many ministers, they come and visit the center here. Uh, and I'm happy to uh, to establish this center in Bethlehem to make yeah, it's part of my life now and I think everybody must do something for his uh, country and I do it for my country, Palestine. And you have a website for people who want to see a lot of the things that are here. It's a, it's a shame in some ways this is radio because there's so much to see on the website as well. So some of the things that you've been talking about, they can actually see that on the website. What is your website address for those who would like to look? Yes. It's www.palestinianheritagecenter.com. But more easy, if just you put my name, Maha Saka, M-A-H-A, Saka, S-A-C-A, on Google, and the first page is my website, and you can look for more than 500 pages there. I must say as well, if you write center, center is spelled the American way rather than the English way, so it's E-R rather than R-E. So, Maha, thank you very much for sharing what your culture is like. Yes, thank you very much, because you make this interview with me. I am happy to let the people know more about my culture, and I invite everybody to visit Bethlehem. It's uh, safe, it's uh, peace here, and we ask for peace, we, ha we ask for independent states, and we love uh, to live in peace with our children like others.